Psalms, Book 3, Psalm 73, a Psalm of Asaph. <clears throat> you remember there was, there was a gentleman that was named Asaph of David who was put in charge of all the music of David, and his name is mentioned throughout Scripture. He was truly a man of God, truly a, a, one that had the right worship of music for God. So God has given his name. God's not going to give the name of the worship of music today any glory or praise. <clears throat> Truly, God is good to Israel. Uh-oh. Who is this psalm for? It's for Israel. Now, I've heard people say, you can claim all the promises in the Bible. You can't claim this chapter. And I'll tell you some things about Christianity that I know. I have lived through this chapter, and it does not go to us Christians. Matter of fact, I have lived part of this. Israel, that's not us. Now, there are people out there, religions, such as Armstrong, Roman Catholicism, Mormons, who steal from Israel and put them, put them in there as God's promised people. That's not, that's not true. God is angry with the Jews today for their rejection. But he's never going to forsake them as a nation. Even to such as are of a clean heart. Well, God's not going to be good to a Jew that has a wicked, vile heart. Even if they are his people. So this first verse tells as much me. Even for a Christian. God is not going to be good to you if your heart is wicked. You may be saved, but as for me, the writer of the psalm, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. He was on unstable ground, maybe death, maybe uh, defeat, something in his life going down for, going to a valley. For I was envious at the foolish. And the Bible says that the, that the, the Pharisees and all of them delivered. Pilate's words were for envy. They delivered Jesus to him. Envy is the root of murder. You may not do the murder, but remember we've studied so far? You don't have to do. You just have to think. Envy is a wicked and he's envying the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now that's the theme of this chapter. I looked at the, the unsaved man, the ungodly man, and I said, you know what? Wow, he's doing good. And you're going to look at people, or you're going to have people that in your lives you're going to look at them. They're going to say, they're not a Christian, but wow, look how good they're doing. Remember we studied this in Job? With almost entire chapter, you know, their, their calf generates, makes more calves. Their children playful. And they tell God that we don't want to have anything to do with you. That's one of the chapters in the study of Job that you go back and find. For there are no bands in their death. Well, death. Now, what he's looking at, it, he's looking at it as a carnal, worldly view. He's not looking at it as eternal. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. But as far as their life from birth to death, everything looks great. You know, there are Christians that die of cancer. There are Christians that die young. And there are worldly people who are unsaved. You look at them, and they just go... Go to bed and they don't wake up. But their strength is firm. Look how much power they have. Look how much they can do. You got one man that's in the, in the White House today as a, as a leader of this nation. And you know how much destruction he has done for us in what, six, seven years? You realize since he's been in all, and now listen, I pray for the man. But let's look at the truth now. I'll go with that. Look how many jobs have lost because of him. Because of his power. 
Look how we lost all our jobs. Look how we the value of money, the gasoline prices. I I can't remember before he got in off, but we weren't paying uh three gallon three dollars a two gallons two dollars a gallon for gas and rising. Look at the milk prices. Look at all the hardship that's happened to this country with him in office. I ain't talking about the shoes. I'm talking about the sinkholes, the, the drought, the fires, all this snow. And Al Gore is telling, calling us idiots because we don't believe in global warming. What? And Al Gore is doing perfectly well. And you look at something like that, well, Lord, he's a liar. He's a liar. There's no global warming. And he's doing good. There are, they are not troubled as other men. Some got money. Some got all their things taken care of. Some don't have problems. You don't think. But you don't know their inside life. You know, a person that has money has to have a security has to have a safe, has to keep calling the bank to make sure the bank still has their money in account, has to watch their children. You don't see that. When was the last time you ever heard of a, a big kidnapping case of somebody who worked for McDonald's and called and said, we have your kid, we want a million dollars or a million burgers, whatever you can give us. That don't happen. See, the thing is, when we look at these people who are doing well, we don't see the true story. We realize that the story is that most, majority of the people that win these big lotteries end up in bankruptcy, end up in a life that's ruined. And they thought that if I could win the $1 million, my life would be set. Neither are they plagued like other men. Well, they are. They got all men, Job says, uh, as, a, as a sparks fire upwards, they're trouble. You just may not see it. You don't know what kind of medicine cabinet that guy's got at home, all the prescription pills he's got to take. He may be the top CEO of the company, but how's his stomach? My stomach's okay. I mean, there's certain foods. I, I mean, if you give me something really hot with Tabasco sauce, no, I can't eat that. I'm sorry. It's just too hot. But, you know, there are some people out there, if you give them a regular meal like we had spaghetti tonight, that would burn their, their stomach wide open because of an ulcer. There are some people out there that you think are perfectly fine, and the only reason why they act well and all that because they're drugged. And a lot of people who are rich and all that, you know what? They do cocaine. The big drug. Why? If it's so great, why are they doing that? Why do they get alcohol? Listen, I ain't poor, I ain't poor and I ain't rich. I'm average. My bills are paid. I don't need alcohol. I know my wife and my children love me. When I go off to work, I don't need to worry. I mean, worry about, you know, pray for that safety of the house. I don't need to worry about my wife. I don't need to worry about my children. Because they love me. You know, there are people out there with all that. Their, their wife or their, their husband, is, is, and while they're away, all business, there's a phantom and in, in skeletons in the closet. And some of them don't even know. Some of them will suspect. Even themselves are, are cheating on their spouses. Wondering, am I going to get caught? See, we don't see those things when we look at these rich people. We don't see these people, oh, their life is just wonderful and hunky-dory. You don't know the true story. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Now, pride is never God. America is going to fall because she has pride. Plain and simple. 
There's no other. There's no other way. There's no other thing you can get out of it unless you truly repent, and it's not going to repent. Pride causes destruction. Pride was one of the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. But a chain. You're tied up. You can't. You can go only so. You put a dog on a chain. The dog can go only far as that chain will lighten him, and that's it. He's restricted. You are restricted in your pride. Violence covers them as a garment. But you don't see that part. God will go after them. Well, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen Revelation 20 take place yet. You say, well, what's Revelation 20? The great white throne judgment. You know, God may have blessed them to be saved. And what it is, saved or not saved, they, and as all Christians, every single person from Adam to the last man will be held accountable for everything that God's given them. You don't see that. Verse 6 is like a boa constrictor. I'll use this illustration. As you take, as you breathe in, that boa constrictor gets tight. And you breathe in again. If your chest goes in, that bowl of your gets tighter and tighter so you can't take no more breath. And that's exactly what pride will do to a man. It will suffocate you. And that part you don't see. Listen, stay with the Lord and do right with the Lord and let him bless you. And the Bible says, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution. You're going to suffer, suffer rightly. And these may be the people that you're, that you're suffering under. They will have to give an account. Their eyes stand out with fatness. Well, everything they got is increased and multiplied. Everything they want, they get. That didn't make Solomon happy. You know God gave Solomon a blank check. And he died a miserable man. You know he did. They have they have more than heart they have more than heart could wish. That's America. We've got more crap today than we need. Your average person, with all the electronic junk today, gets stuck in a in a in a violent rainstorm would would electrocute himself. We've got gadgets and, and stuff to do everything in our life, but we ain't, you know there's something in America, we don't have the time to do it. What happened to the old farming days without the electricity, without the gadgets, and everything was done in a proper order? We've got all kinds of kitchen gadgets today, and women grown up don't know how to use them. The answer to supper for them, let's go out to eat. Let's get a microwave meal. And if that woman marries a man, she shortchains that man by that crap meal. God never intended us to have microwave dinners. God intended a woman, to, a man to get the seed, the grain and stuff like that, and a woman to grind it and to make it into a meal. Go in the Bible and read it. You know whose wife didn't do that? Lot's wife. It said, Abraham said, Sarah, got some company here. You want to make some meal? I'm going to go get the calf, okay? All right, dear. And when, when it came Lot's turn, it said the Lot went and prepared the meal. His wife was too busy at the, at, at the woman's club. She wasn't in the kitchen. And she was the first one to go on her own recourse when it came to the judgment of God, become a pillar of salt, something you find in the kitchen. Doesn't God play great jokes? We have too much in America. You know, if God 
There are places in the Bible, I know it's not going to happen, but uh, Philip was at one place and God dropped him over where the Ethiopian eunuch was to witness to him. And when Ethiopian eunuch got saved, he was baptized, and Paul, I mean, the Spirit took Philip and moved him to another place. If the Spirit would take an American today and drop him off in India, that he would not know what to do. He wouldn't get a cell phone reception, first of all. He wouldn't know how to survive. Today, Americans don't even have the thing to, to read a book. If America failed tomorrow, this family can go down, go down to the, the library and look at books and try to figure out what, what plants we can eat and what we can't eat. How to how to deal? I know I wouldn't be able to butcher an animal without throwing up, but I know resources. America doesn't have that today. We've got these games, uh, Farmville and uh, family farms and all like that. And to those games, those people think, "Wow, corn grows in twenty hours. Why is there famine?" I planted tomatoes and they're up in twelve hours. Why is there famine? How many kids in America today know what a garden is and has ever put their hands down in dirt? They are corrupt. They are. That means you're going to rot. You're going to rust away. You know, you are going to rot. You have metal in you. You don't believe me? Look at a multivitamin uh, pill on the ingredients. There's zinc. There's iron. <laughs> Women need iron. You know, iron melts. I mean, not melts. Excuse me. It rusts. Copper, you're going to rust away one day. You're going to rot. The great man of Elm, you're going to rot. I led the whole world in World War II and war, and his body's rotted. We've got the Declaration of Independence, and all the signatures of that decoration are now rotting. I'm the president of the world right now, and one day you're going to die, and you're going to rot. I'm the CEO of this company, and you're going to die, and you're going to rot. A man like Hugh Hefner began rotting before he died. Rich man. And they say when they found his body, it was shriveled up. But he was rich. And speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lofty. You know, speak wicked, wickedly against oppression. Last night we learned that the king's job is to judge against oppression. Today in America, this, this thing would, would be, if it's wrong, if it's illegal, if it's pollution, if it's anything wrong, you go to the congressman that you know, you throw him some business, some money, and you get a law to pass it. America don't care about you and your car. People weren't buying insurance, so they went to the legislator and say, listen, our business is failing. It won't vote for you next time. You make a law that you have to have auto insurance. Same thing with medical insurance. The same thing, car seats. People weren't buying car seats. Oh, oh, make a law so they have to buy it. That's oppression. Making you buy something, making you get something that is not what you want. They speak lofty. You know, and their, their head's in the clouds. They don't know what they, they have. They have no idea of nothing. <clears throat> they have no knowledge of God. They're full of hot air. They set their mouth against the heavens. They, they curse God. And his throne. My heavens. That's an expression. My Lord. Their tongue walketh through the earth. <laughs> See a little tongue walking down. Read what James has to say about the tongue. I think it's James chapter 3. You know what that you know what James says about the tongue? It says it's set on the fire of hell. 
earthly tongue, a worldly tongue, a filthy, dirty tongue. That's what that verse means. People don't know at work yet. They don't realize who I am, a preacher or anything like that. And I just sit there amazed at what they say. Therefore his people return hither. And the water and the and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. I don't understand that verse. But a full cup is God's judgment. As listen, as they're doing, God's filling that cup up, and when that cup starts overflowing, then the wrath of God falls upon them. America's almost there, if not there already. That cup of judgment is for individuals, and it's also for nations. You'll find in study. Listen, Babylonia, she has that cup in her hand. A Catholic church has a cup. And when you read through the Bible, when you when you study the Bible, and you come with the word cross cup, see what it means. It can mean a cup as in a drinking cup, or it could mean wrath. And they say, How does God know? You know, America doesn't say anything about God today. They don't want God. At least these wicked people are enough to think about God. You say, when do they say to how does God know? When they come across a gospel track or a street preacher or hear something on their, oh, God, who needs him? He doesn't know about me and all that. It's a rejection of God and a rejection of his word. Is there knowledge in the most high? Does God know anything? Is there a rock too big that God can't move? God, how would you get all those animals on that ark? God, how would you make that piece of lump of clay start talking like an idiot? You know, i got to bite my tongue at work sometimes. Behold, these are the ungodly. What are they, who are the ungodly? That say, they say about God, he doesn't know nothing, and, what, and he's not going to know. Who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. There you go. What was that man in, in uh, Luke 16? He was a rich man that went to hell. Who was that man that God said, Thou fool, tonight your soul shall be required? He was a rich man. Now listen, J.C. Penney was a rich man. He was saved. He's in heaven today. It is easier for, an eye, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter heaven. And so what do we do when we sell all these Bibles and we're rich in God and we got diplomas on the wall? Well, we say that's a little gate in Jerusalem to get us into heaven. No. Jesus meant it exactly. It is hard. Read James. The entire book of James marked the rich man as he talks about the tribulation period that a rich man will hardly enter the tribulation and come out as a righteous man. Because the only way you can be rich in the tribulation is you got to have the mark on your head or your forehead. If you're rich in the tribulation, you will be damned. Guarantee 99%. My jury of rich men out there are ungodly. Who's the exception? David, Solomon. Did Mary and Joseph have money? No. Herod did. Where did Herod end up? In hell. Where did Pilate end up? Probably hell. It says in the in the Gospels that the, the high priest, Caiaphas, had a uh, castle and probably died and went to hell. And some poor man named Lazarus, who had dog therapy on his sores, went to heaven. Job was a rich man, but God had to break him of all that riches. But he got him back. He was right in the Lord. See, a Christian has no business playing a lottery trying to get rich. The love of money is the root to all evil, the Bible says. So, ungodly do prosper in the world. They won't prosper at the judgment. Get that. Know that. 
Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain. Now this is, we're going back to the writer of the psalm again. He's repenting. For looking at these people and saying, wow, they're doing good. What about me? But first he's saying, I have cleansed my heart in vain. And that's what he's saying there. He's saying, well, you know what? I repented for nothing. I'm bringing my animals to the, to the tabernacle. I'm doing what God's supposed to be. And look at them. They're, they're doing good. And look at me. I'm not doing so good. And wash my hands in innocency. I was innocent. I didn't do nothing wrong. And I'm getting the shaft. This ain't right, Lord. I'm yours. And I got pain. I got sorrow. I got bills. They don't. Something wrong, Lord. For all day long have I been plagued. I'm in trouble. I got troubles. I got sorrows. I, Lord, they don't. You're looking at the worldly view again. You're looking on the outside. And chasing every morning. Wow, look at that. You know, God, you know what that says right there? This guy has been looking at the worldly people and all that, and God's been chasing them for it. Get your eyes off of them. And God will chasten you. Especially when you say, oh, I've done what God told me, repent, and, and I brought what I was supposed to bring, and I confess it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's vain. And God's like, okay, I got <laughs> you really think that? You in trouble, son. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Keep your mouth shut. Confess it before the Lord, put it under the blood, and then get on with your Christian life. Maybe God will give you money. I don't know. If he does, don't fall in love with it. When I thought to know this, it was too pain, painful for me. It drove me into pain to, to think about all this. I'm defying my God that loves me. Looking at the worldly, the, the devilish people. It's wrong. Now, let's watch this one. You know why America's failing? Verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood therein. He went to church and got some preaching, and the preacher brought the word. And preached the word not of sugar and spice and everything nice. The preacher would get up and say, the wicked are going to hell. Oh, Lord, I forgot that. I'm sorry. I'm not going to hell because of what you've done. You tell me what to do. I'm not. They're going to hell because they rejected you, God. I'm not. Sorry, Lord. You know, you don't get that in America today. You get sugary, diabetic messages, and no one repents. No one gets right. And some people think they're saved, and they're not. This guy walked in the church, got a message brought to him, and he repented and got right. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Oh, okay, Lord, slippery places. Yeah, I, my steps were, had slipped. My feet almost gone. They were in worse condition as I was in verse 2, but they're going to hell. I'm not. Lord, you stop me from completely falling. Lord, you won't stop them. When God tells them to depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, be cast into the lake of fire, God is not going to stop that. They ca thou, God, casts them down into destruction. Oh, as a Christian... I will never suffer destruction. And I, what I mean by that, I'm not saying on planet Earth. 
God may destroy everything tonight in a, a sinkhole. That's not what I'm talking about. My eternal rewards, my eternal being of who I am, a born-again Christian, can never be destroyed. I am saved and always saved. Even if I don't do nothing for the Lord and end up in heaven with a bald head with no crowns, I will still be in heaven. Based upon the merit of the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work in the gospel according to scripture. The unsaved don't have that. How are they brought into desolation? Hell is a lonely place. You know what Satan has them believe? I'll be there with all my friends to party. That's a lie. As a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. Imagine that moment when you're standing before God. And you hear what you've been hearing on the earth for your entire life. But it is God. Go to hell! What does your money do for you then? What does your riches do from then? What does God know now? God knows you're a sinner and you rejected him. Go to hell! Are the worst words you can hear God say to you. And utterly consumed with terrors, that moment of terror. When you have rejected God and God rejects you. If you go to any practical church in America, that is not preached. In the end, all people will go to heaven. No, no, no. You are a liar. And probably end up in hell's fire. As a dream when one waketh. Oh, trying to get up. So, O oh Lord, when thou wakest, thou shalt despise their image. Second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he wakes up and comes, he's going to hate man. He's coming with wrath. And out of his mouth comes that sword, the word, and to be consumed in the eye sockets, one of the prophets say. He's not coming to be born as a baby in a manger. He's coming back as a lion, ferocious, for what you rejected him and cursed him. He ain't going to want to see your face. Why not preached in a church on a Sunday morning in your churches? Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. And for what? I was so foolish to be looking at those people like I envied them. He's repenting. He's getting right. Lord, I am so sorry. I have forgot your blessings. I need to sit down and write them down. Number one, I ain't going to hell. Number two, you love me. And number one and number two can be switched back and forth. You love me, I'm not going to hell. I'm not going to hell because you love me. You, you can do those interchangeable. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. I was a, I'm a dumb animal. You know, Balaam's ass had more sense than Balaam did. Balaam was so blinded so that he couldn't see the angel. What stopped him from seeing the angel that the ass saw her? And to realize when you look at the world and the worldly people and you envy them, you got to realize you are a sinner. You need to repent. You need to go back to your first love. You need to go back to Bethel. You need to start naming the blessings and counting them one by one and get back to God and get right. And then you need to go tell those people that you've been envying about Jesus. 
See, when you envy and look at your life, you're not telling them about Jesus. You're ashamed of Jesus because you wouldn't be in the condition you are. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Continually with thee. That's amazing to say that as an Old Testament saint. They didn't have eternal security as such as we have. Though God has holding me by my right hand. You mean God walked with him, held his hand, and he still looked at the world? Yes. And you can do it too, Christian. You can sin this sin too. And it's wrong. So foolish was I, and ignorant I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou hast guided me with thy counsel. That's a good counsel. That's godly counsel. Most of the counsels in the Bible, if you go through, especially the book of Acts, they're wicked counsels. Matter of fact, I, I think they're spelt different, matter of fact. I have to check that one, but I'm not sure. But I think there's even a spelling difference, but I could be wrong. And afterward, receive me to glory. Here's a guy in the Old Testament saying, I'm going to heaven. Whom have I in heaven but thee? Who do you have in heaven? Oh, my grandma's in heaven. My mama's in heaven. My no, no, no. That's not what you're going to heaven for. For your family, for your friends. You're going to heaven for God. To worship God and not your family or your coon dogs, whatever you want. Heaven is not a southern comfort place. Heaven ain't a Rocky Mountains. It ain't an Appalachian Mountain. It ain't no New England. It ain't no forestry of beautiful grass and, and butterflies. It's all about God. And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Can you say that, Christian? I live down in Daytona Beach, Florida, and this Sunday, you know what some Christian's desire is going to be? Some idiot to, to go under a checker flag. No. Yeah, that's a desire. You want that guy to win. You want some 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 team to, to, to throw a ball to here, there, and everywhere to win. That's your desire. And isn't that man, isn't that a man that drives a car? Isn't that a man that throws the ball? Isn't it a man that, that at the Olympics? You have taken your desire off of God, thee, and put it onto man. You have sinned. You have violated the commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Well, he's not a God. He's your desire. You know, a man in the Bible I read is only one other desire beside God for a man. You ready for this, you idiot? You read Ezekiel. The only desire that Ezekiel had other than God was his wife. And when God said, desire of your eyes, to Ezekiel, he's talking about his wife. Some of you got it all messed up. You don't know where the priority of God is. You don't know where the priority of your spouse is. You got your desires on everything but what the Bible has it on. I can't find race cars and car and name in the Bible. I can't find NASCAR. I can't find baseball. I can't find football. I can't find the Olympics in the Bible. But I can find God. And I can find a man that loves God will love his wife. What is your desire? Desire to be top known. Sorry, God is top. My flesh and my heart faileth. It's going to. You're going to die. Heart failure. There's heart failure in the Bible. But God is the strength of my heart. 
and my portion forever. You're going to die. The wages of sin is death. The only thing that will keep you going after death is God. You don't have God in your life. You don't do what God told you to do in your dispensation. Here's the law. You were supposed to go to the temple and do everything according to the law to be saved. Today is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Nothing else. Nothing you can do. Only by the blood. Only by the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and arose from the grave all according to Scripture. Other than that, if you don't believe in that, you will die, you will burn in hell, God will not take care of you. But if you are a saved, born-again Christian, if your heart fails, if you die, your flesh rots, God will take your soul and up straighten you for all eternity. For lo, they that are far from thee, God, shall perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not Perish. Oh, there's a definition of what the word perish means. You know, when you got milk that's perished, you throw it out. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. Look at that. You don't do what God tells you to do. You are likened to a whore. You pay for it. You know what you do? You pay for the tickets. You pay for the booze. You pay for the cigarettes. You pay for sex. You pay for everything. But in the Bible, according to Jesus Christ, he paid the price of our sins. You take part in the world, the wages of sin is death. You are a whore with the world if you don't do what God tells you to do. But it is good for me to draw nigh near to God. It is good. What is good for me? Draw nigh to God. I don't want to do that. I don't believe in God. I want to do my sins. I don't want that. Uh, religion is good for anybody. If you're not near to God, you don't have nothing good. Don't you say, oh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Are you near to God? No, you're not doing good. You'll just lie. Repent. Do we go to an old-fashioned altar? Huh? Don't lie to people and say you're doing good if you're not near to God. Because the Bible says the only good thing for you to do is get near to God. There you go. I have put my trust in the Lord. Oh! Another good thing is to put your trust in the Lord. And I have declared all thy works. Have you told the testimony of the Lord what he's done for you in your life? Have you put your trust in him? And then when he's taking care of you, have you told people what he's done for you? <clears throat> Get your eyes off the world. Get your eyes off sinners. Get your eyes off backslidden Christians. Get your eyes on the Lord. Grab him. Take your right hand. Grab him in hand. And start walking. And listen. Be good. How do I be good? What did it say? Draw nigh to God. That's the best thing you can do. That's the only thing you should do. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. 
that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art.